Welcome back to chapter seven of the Mega 65 User's Guide series. In this chapter, we'll be talking about transferring files. We'll delve into one of the most essential tasks for any Mega 65 owner, moving files between your Mega 65 and other devices. As always, check out the companion blog post which provides this information in text form and includes additional tips and tricks. And don't forget to watch chapters one through six. Even if you think you know everything about your Mega 65, I'm sure you'll learn new things about your favorite retro recreation. Now, let's dig into chapter seven. While writing your own programs on the Mega 65 is rewarding, you'll eventually want to run software created by others or back up your work. File transfers are the key, and the Mega 65 offers several options. Let's begin with the Ethernet connection, which is the fastest and most reliable method for transferring files, and it involves using an Ethernet cable. Networking supports both direct and network connections, and the Mega 65 team has created both GUI and terminal software to make the transfer easy. We'll take a look at both of those in this video. SD card transfer is something you are probably all familiar with. This is where you copy files or .d81 images or other disk images directly onto an SD card using your PC. Remember to format the SD card using the Mega 65. See chapter four for more information on that process. This is the most unreliable and cumbersome method. I call it unreliable because PC operating systems, in this case I'm talking to you Mac OS, can sometimes write unintended files on SD cards causing clutter and confusion. Other OSs can fragment files leading to errors. This used to be the only way we could move files, but that's no longer the case thanks to the developers. There are also advanced interfaces for developers such as JTAG and UART interfaces. You can use these to transfer files and debug FPGA cores. This method is beyond the scope of the series, but you can find more information in the Mega 65 developer's guide, and I'll put the link down to that in the video description down below. If you are interested in a serial connection using the UART adapter, check out my Connect a Mega 65 to a Mac PC using a USB serial adapter video. I'll have a link to that in the video description below as well. All three methods are valid. However, Ethernet is a recommended method for most users because of its speed and reliability. So let's learn more about the tools that will help you transfer files using an Ethernet cable. But before we do that, we need to understand networking. The Mega 65 comes with Ethernet capabilities, allowing it to connect to your local network or directly to your PC. Let's break down how this works. First, unlike most devices, the Mega 65 lets you set your own media access control or MAC address. And you can do this in the configuration utility. This gives you a unique identifier on your network. We've covered this in chapter four. You have two main connection options. You can connect your Mega 65 to your local network via a router like any other device, or again, you can connect it directly to your PC using an ethernet cable. This direct connection creates a small isolated network between the two devices. For file transfers, the Mega 65 uses the IPv6 format. This is the newer internet protocol, and it's typically enabled by default on most modern PCs. This is a 128-bit address IPv4 upgrade designed to provide more addresses to the world. IPv6 is required for M65 Connect and other tools to work, and it's nice to know that Mega65 developers are looking forward and not to the past when it comes to network connectivity. Now, Mega65 networking tools use the user data protocol, or UDP, and that's at port 4510 for the initial initial connection, and then the file transfer happens over IPv6. Together, this provides a reliable connection and file transfer. Hey, here's a tip. Your PC might ask for network permissions the first time you request them, so be sure to allow or approve those. While we're focused on local network transfers in this chapter, it is worth mentioning that the Mega 65 can also connect to the internet and connect to BBSs via Telnet, running some software called Pet Terminal. Now, this is available on the Mega 65 files host, and it runs in C64 mode, but it utilizes some Mega 65 features to make the magic happen. And you can download it again from the file host. However, be warned, it is still a work in progress. 
Here's hoping some enterprising developers will grab that software and update it and get some of those bugs worked out so that we can connect to a whole world of BBSs on the internet using our Mega 65. But our focus today is on using our Mega 65 on our local network. And one of the best ways to do that is using some software called M65 Connect. This application features both a graphical interface and command line tools. I've teased this application in other chapters, but now it's time to learn how to download and install M65 Connect. The first thing you'll want to do is visit the Mega 65 file host. Again, all those links will be down in the video description below. Search for M65 Connect. Download the version matching your PC's operating system. I'm using a Mac for all my examples. Extract that downloaded archive. Now let's look at the process to install on three popular modern operating systems. First of all, let's look at M65 Connect for Windows. Now, when you decompress the archive for M65 Connect for Windows, you'll find a folder called M65 Connect. Click on the m65connect.exe file to start the application. If Microsoft Defender blocks it, click More Info and then Run Anyway. Those options should allow the application to start. The Mac OS version is an app bundle entitled m65connect.app. To run it, follow these steps. First, move the app to your applications folder. Double click the app to launch it. Since the application is not signed, you will need to approve the first launch in the security settings of the Mac. On Linux, double click the m65 connect file in the extracted folder to run the application. Linux is by far the most trouble free install and the quickest way to run M65 Connect. Before transferring files, you must first enable network listening on the Mega 65. Now this does require some hardware changes. We want to set the dip switch number two on the main board to on. It is off by default. So if this is your first time trying this feature, you'll need to open up your Mega 65. It's okay to do this and it, the process is very easy. Just remove the screws from the bottom and lift the lid and that will reveal the motherboard. I keep the screws removed all the time because I'm constantly experimenting with my Mega 65. You probably don't need to. You might want to replace the screws once you get that dip switch flipped. Now press shift pound on the Mega 65. The power light will blink yellow and green. That indicates network listening is now active. To disable, just simply press shift plus pound again, or you can reset the Mega 65 or power cycle. Your Mega 65 is now ready to transfer files across your network or from your PC. File transfer requires initiating a session on your PC and the Mega 65 using either M65 Connect or command line tools such as Mega 65 FTP. Make sure to save any data or programs before you initiate a file transfer. The Mega 65 resets the machine to start the transfer. Let's start with the easiest tool to use, M65 Connect. Open M65 Connect on your PC. Again, press Shift plus Pound to enable network listening on the Mega 65. Once connected, click the SD card button in M65 Connect to open the file manager. Use the left pane to navigate to your PC's files and the right pane for the Mega 65 SD card. Select a file and click the transfer arrow to copy it. Using a connection also provides these additional features. You can create a new .d81 image by clicking the plus D81 button. You can transfer files directly to and from a .d81 image on the PC, which is really cool. Just click the .d81 file and drag a PRG, SEQ, or other file from your PC. Once the file is moved to the .d81, you can transfer it to the Mega 65. Now, close the SD card manager to end your session and restart your Mega 65. Here's another note, the network connection does not allow some M65 Connect features such as screen capture to work. I really miss that, by the way. You'll need a serial connection for that one. Once again, check out my video on using a serial connection if you need screen capture capabilities, but hopefully that feature will be coming in future versions of M65 Connect. Now, let's talk about using some command line tools. Let's talk about the Mega 65 FTP command. Let's warm up those fingers because the Mega 65 FTP tool offers advanced users a command line interface for network transfers with some really cool options. 
To start an interactive session, use these steps. Save any data on your Mega 65. Press Shift plus Pound to enable network listening on your Mega 65. From the terminal, use the command below to initiate the interactive connection from your PC. Once connected, you will see the following prompt. To exit the prompt, simply type exit and press enter. Let's take a look at some of the commands available using Mega 65 FTP within the terminal. First of all, we can get a file. This, of course, will retrieve a file from the Mega 65. We can also use the DIR command to list the directory of the Mega 65 SD card. If we use LDIR, we can look at the local working directory on our PC. If we use MKDIR and a folder name, we can create a subdirectory on the Mega 65 SD card. CD and the folder name, we can move to the subdirectory on the Mega 65 SD card. LCD plus a directory name will move to the PC local subdirectory. We can type help to get a list of all the available commands. And then as we alluded to earlier, we can type exit, which will close the Mega 65 FTP connection. Now we've done all this using interactive mode and it will suffice for most transfers. However, you can also run commands in a non-interactive way as part of a script or just out of preference for one-off commands or speed. Non-interactive mode is also great to create alias commands to decrease typing and speed up transfers. Here's an example of a non-interactive transfer to give you an idea of what is possible. Taking a look at these bash commands, can you determine what happens? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And for those who are more experienced Mega 65 users, drop some additional command line tips and tricks in the comments below to share with viewers. If we get a good list, that could make for a really cool follow-up video to our chapter seven Mega 65 user's guide. Although not covered in the Mega 65 user's manual, I want to highlight that Mega 65 FTP is not the only command line tool you should explore. Upon installing M65 Connect, you'll also have access to a few more commands. Let's take a look at those. The first command of note is Etherload. This provides additional network tools for developers, but can be useful for a user. Take a look at the help file to see how you can use this command. M65 is another terminal command and it provides additional tools to manage a Mega 65. If we think we might want to spend more time in that, again, leave a comment down below. Also of use for those who have not purchased a Mega 65 right now is the ROM diff command. This will allow you to patch the contents of the original C65 ROM with the additions from the Mega 65 developers and create a ROM that you can use in emulation or even on an a FPGA board. Just as a reminder, the ROM is protected by copyright, the original C65 ROM. So this is another tool you can use if you have access to the original C65 ROM to move it forward. I do have a video on it. Go look for a video on how I show you how to patch your ROMs. All right, believe it or not, that wraps up chapter seven. It's kind of a short chapter, but it's packed full of great information to allow you to get more use out of your Mega 65. And because we're done with chapter seven, believe it or not, that is the final chapter of the Mega 65 user's guide series. However, there's still more information in the back half of the manual. I'm brainstorming now how to share this information found in the appendices. And the appendices is just full of commands. If you have ideas for the best way to share those commands from basic out of the user's guide, I'd love to hear your feedback. If we get some really great ideas, because I do not want to do every single command, let me know in the comments down below and I'll take a look. If you are interested in joining my Discord where we have also a Mega 65 channel, be sure to go down below and learn how you can become a member and support the channel. All right, that is it for me. Uh, thank you for joining in all seven chapters of the user's guide. And again, I'll be back and we'll cover some of those other commands. If you have other ideas for things you'd like to see, other Mega 65 videos, also put those in the video comments down below. That's it for me, Retrocombs out.